What's up, y'all? It's Hatsa Kevin. This is a discussion video, and we're going to talk about, well, I'm going to talk about, uh, Tolkien, J.R.R. Tolkien, and Old English. Well, Tolkien is obviously known for writing the uh, stories of Middle Earth, uh, you know, The Hobbit and Lord of the Rings and the like. But what I'm going to talk about may surprise you of. Uh, of, uh, about Tolkien and how influenced he was by uh, Germanic mythology and, of course, Old English. Well, Tolkien was uh, actually originally from South Africa. Um, he's of German and English descent. Um, his first, actually, his first old language, old Germanic language, was not Old English. In fact, it was Gothic. And what is Gothic? Gothic is a language that was spoken by a tribe in what we know now as Sweden called the Goths. And the Gothic language is the um, only well attested East Germanic language, whereas Old English is a West Germ uh, Germanic language. Anyway, so he that was, that was his first um, Germanic language as far as old ones go. He was tutored by the notable great Yorkshireman named Joseph Wright who was uh, one of Tolkien's uh, tutors. Uh, you know, and, and Joseph Wright, um, I mean, if you're a linguist, you probably, if you're a Germanic linguist like myself, uh, you, you probably, you know, like, it'd be hard not to know about him because he has written uh, grammar for Old High German, uh, Old English, uh, Gothic, you know, he's just so wonderful and he, I think, I think he was the man behind writing a dictionary of the English dialects or something like that. I mean, I, he, he's just fantastic. I mean, if you if you love languages, especially Germanic languages, this guy would be your hero, as he is my hero, and and a hero of many other people. Anyway, um, Tolkien. Going back to Tolkien. Tolkien, uh, he was very proud of his English heritage on his mother's side. He really felt really close to his Mercian um, heritage. Um, Mercia, well that kingdom, what we know now in England as Midlands. Um, for those of you who don't know, yes, there are, you know, there are a number of kingdoms, uh, but the main ones that we know about, uh, as far as uh, Old English language goes, um, you have Northumbria, which is all up in the north, We're going from, well, let's say, give or take from Yorkshire all the way to Lola in Scotland that's maybe even more than that uh, maybe even more in England and, and all that I mean that's give or take uh, I might be a little wrong in that but it's, know that Northumbria is in the north hence north you know, north of the Humber anyway uh, you have that dialect and then you have the Mercian dialect which is the Midlands and then in the south you had um, uh, you had a number of dialects there. You, well, I mean, if, for the for sake of simplicity and the main ones, you got West Saxon, which is the most attested one that we have. A lot of the old, old English texts are they're from uh, West Saxon, and then they, then we have on the east we have uh, Kent and the Kentish dialect of Old English. But the but the language that we speak uh, that evolved it came from the well majority of it came from the Mercian dialect, which is grouped with the um, Northumbrian dialect as the as the Angle Anglian dialects uh, and and why Angle because that goes back to northern Germany southern Denmark of the, of where the Angles lived and they were a tribe and they came to England and that was just a huge tangent anyway so back to Tolkien uh, he felt very proud of his uh, Mer Mercian heritage and this is really important now not many people know this I mean a lot of people think Tolkien oh what a great uh, storyteller but no he was so proud of his Englishness that he, you know, he felt sort of remorse uh, in a way that a lot of English mythology, distinctly English mythology, has been. There's not a lot of it. Um, some say it's due to the early Christianization of the Anglo-Saxons. Some say it was the Norman invasion in 1066 A.D. Others say it is the. Um, uh, it is the Industrial Revolution. I like I would, you know, knowing this, uh, I would think it would be, you know, I, I think I would think it would be all of those things, but I would think the, um, the Industrial Revolution, 
would have the b biggest impact of those. Because thing is, in the 1800s, um, this is the time you know uh, when Jacob Grimm and his brother were going around. Well, it's actually more his, his brother. Uh, going around and collecting these old fairy tales, you know, Cinderella and all that stuff, Ashputal and, you know, Hansel and Gretel and, and all that. Um, these were only recorded in, like, 18, I think, 50s, maybe, maybe earlier. I don't know. Uh, I don't know the exact dates on that, but uh, but this didn't really happen in England because a lot of the, you know, women and, and children, you know, they were put in the factories and whatnot, and, and obviously these stories did not get passed on, you know, as I understand it. Which is really, really sad. So it's always good to pre to preserve your folklore in one way or another, because it could have remnants of you know pre-Christian. Uh, I don't know. Pick a country: pre-Christian German, pre-Christian Sweden. I don't know. Yeah, anyway, um, having all this, so he created Middle Earth, his his Middle Earth uh, as a mythology for the English. That's something, and. And that's 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 really ambitious. Like they create a mythology for our people. You know, and that's why Tolkien was so. He put so much effort in making the, the, this world so realistic in its own right, uh, so in depth. You know, even um, the the lineages of the kings in, in Middle Earth. You know, they, they you know it's like as if they were real kings. You know, I mean. The more you look in depth of his world, the more you you just enamored by his, by his imaginative prowess, if you will. Um, but once you get into languages and mythology, that's when you begin to really enjoy Tolkien, and we'll get into that. Um, and so yes, Tolkien was very inspired by Norse mythology and Old English. Uh, he taught Old English in Oxford, I believe, in the 40s and 50s. And so, uh, so, and we can see this Old English influence um, through through the names of the characters of the stories, and uh, give you a few examples. Um, the word Ent, uh, Ent in, well, the, well, in Middle Earth, they're known as these giant tree beings. Well, the word Ent in Old English means giant. Because the word giant itself is uh, it comes from old, um, well not old French, I think Anglo-Norman. Um, well, it, it's of French origin uh, of giant. Because words have a j in the beginning. Um, these are likely to be of French origin. For example, judge, juice, jury, jump. Uh, yeah, jump. I mean, when we think of jump, we think of it a very uh, uh, quintessential English word. Well, no, it's really a French word. Because the dramatic equivalent would be to spring. Hence, in old English, spring done. To spring to jump. Um, that's one of one of many examples. Uh, then we have Gollum, based off of Grend uh, uh, of Grendel, Grendel from the uh, uh, old English uh, epic uh, Beowulf, Beorn, character from um, from Middle Earth, uh, based off of the character uh, Beowulf from well Beowulf. <laughs> um, and uh, what else? Uh, Gandalf. Um, in my previous video, I I I'll called. Um, a little bit about me and uh, Alfgast. Alfgast. Um, I talked about the origin of like d and depth of what an elf is, and and I talked a bit about Gandalf and his his name itself. But in this in this video, I'll be talking about uh, well his appearance. You know, the hat and the robe and the cane and what, uh, the start of the staff. Um, all that is based off of the Anglo-Saxon god Woden, the god of wisdom. And his his and, and we still know of him today through the through the day of the week Wednesday Woden's day, you know Woden's is the genitive form the possessive form of of Woden, and why Wednesday? Uh, as I learned, uh, apparently there was a Frisian in, in influence there. That so it's be Woden, uh, and so Woden's day, and I don't know. I would have to look into that more deeply. Uh, my own time, but uh, yeah, Wednesday, the old English word for uh, Wednesday, yeah, um, yeah. So, but then, uh, uh, then we have in the Hobbit. Spoiler alert! Spoiler alert! Spoiler alert! <laughs> um, <laughs> in the beginning, uh, we have um, uh, they have this thing. Uh, I remember reading uh, like 
like Wednesday tea Gandalf or something like that. Why Wednesday? Well, wouldn't I mean? Well, I mean, I would conclude that you know, because obviously the the appearance of of Gandalf is based off of Woden. Um, uh, what else? I mean, well, I guess the character of, of Gandalf would be similar to Woden in respect that Gandalf was kind of like this father-like figure to many of the characters, you know, especially to the hobbits. And Woden is the, is, is the uh, god of wisdom. In, in the Scandinavian context, he's known as the uh, Allfather. Uh, well, I guess, well, the thing is, I'll talk about that in, a, in another video. All right, because if I if I go on t on too many tangents, you know, then this video will be too long, or right? then we you be you guys will either be really um, absorbing all this information. It's hard to absorb all of it because it's it's so much, and I know some of you are like, oh, this is so interesting, you know. So, but uh, anyway, we'll get there eventually. Um, what else uh, in my notes? Okay, so Rohan, Rohan, uh, and the the Rohan people. Uh, they are based off of the Anglo-Saxons. All the names uh, they have, and you know, they're, they're all pretty much, you know, old English. Uh, the, the language of the Rohan people, uh, Rohiric or Rohanese, uh, it's actually is actually the Mercian dialect of Old English. And that's the thing with another thing with Tolkien. Yeah, he's known for his languages, and um, but now people know about. Yeah, everyone knows about Sindarin and, and Quenya, which is basically the Elvish languages and. And we all know they're from Finnish, but not many people know about Rohirric or, or the fact that it's from uh, the Mercian dialect of Old English or, or the other Germanic languages that were around in Middle-earth, um, like the Men of the Dale, where is they, they speak uh, Old Norse. Um, and as well, uh, there's, a, there's a Gothic dialect, yeah, a Gothic dialect uh, that Tolkien uh, came up uh, uh, that was in Middle-earth and, and called it a Taliska. Yeah, Talis, no, sorry, uh, yeah, Taliska. So yeah, um, so yeah, it, it, it's very in depth. Even with even with his languages, uh, he even wrote about their own own evolution. But, you know, he he really that detail. Tolkien, man, he, he really gave a gave a lot. I mean, it's just amazing. Further, I mean, uh, the whole idea of Middle Earth, you know, comes from I would imagine from the old English word Middenyard. Which is literally middle yard, you know. Hence, uh, you know, uh, a lot of old English texts they would translate that as for word for earth, you know. Or if you were, if you were well, actually in, in, in the Scandinavian context, it'll be uh, well the Anglo Anglicization of the Scandinavian word would be Midgard, um, but in Old Norse would be Midgarthar. Yeah, so Midenyard, uh, and you know, um, Middle Earth. Uh, but then again, mid and yard in old old English text was translated as Earth. Anyway, moving on. Uh, Tolkien, I mean, because he was such a lover of languages, especially of Germanic languages, uh, he and a, and a man named uh, E.V. Gordon started something called the Viking Club. And uh, basically what that was, uh, it was basically uh, them and, and other linguists, they would come together and they would read the poetic and uh, read the Eddas together and they would like write old uh, old uh, texts in, in, in old, old languages and whatnot. Makes me w want to uh, join them, but uh, kind of too late for that. I'm kind of born in the wrong period for that. Anyway, um, but yeah, I mean, if you know the mythology of, of the Germanic peoples and the languages and, and you begin to really appreciate Tolkien's work, like you can really get lost in it, and it's just it's just more immersive to understand why he created Middle Earth and why not. Anyway, thank you for listening. Uh, this is, after all, this is a discussion video, so please write down below uh, what you think, uh, or you can tell me stuff that I don't know about Tolkien. I, I mean, of course, I don't know everything about him, but. Uh, yeah, so um, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you like this video, please hit that like button. If you really like my material, please hit subscribe. I make videos every Saturday and sometimes surprisingly throughout the week. And if you're in, if you if you're utterly in love with what I do and you want to keep in touch on other social media, please like and follow my Facebook and Twitter down below. My name is Kevin, and you're watching Lerenda Old English. Take care.